What's up beautiful people of YouTube, welcome back to Dom's Media Zone. Today I've got another short tutorial on DaVinci Resolve 17. So today we're talking about audio quality and how you can improve your audio sound in DaVinci Resolve 17. So this video is aimed mainly at somebody who would use their voice to speak into a camera like I'm doing right now. So I'm going to show you how to take your voice clip in DaVinci Resolve 17 and how to adjust all the settings to make your voice sound as good as possible. And then I'll show you how to save those settings so that you don't have to readjust them every time you're doing a new video. Without further ado, let's begin. Hi everyone, so to get started on improving our sound quality in DaVinci Resolve 17, the first thing I've done is generated an audio file of me saying a sentence and I've imported that into DaVinci Resolve 17 so that we have something to work with. Okay, so I'm going to play you that sound file just so you can hear what it sounds like before we do anything to it. Hi, and this is the sample of the voice recording that we're going to be using to improve the quality on. So we're going to take this file and improve the sound quality of this audio. And that is the audio file we're going to work with. So to point out, this sound file is located on our audio one track. So as you can see, in DaVinci Resolve 17, you can have multiple audio tracks with multiple sound files. And usually the settings that we're going to apply have to be done for each track if you have more than one track. But for today's purpose, we are just going to be using audio one, which is labeled A1 in DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so the first thing we want to do before we even jump into the Fairlight tab where all the music effects are and sound effects first thing you want to do is right click on your audio track and find the normalize audio levels option click on that and you'll see this little pop-up box appears now usually the default over here is going to be the sample peak program but we are going to use the true peak program and i'll tell you why so so the true peak is basically the highest point that the analog signal reaches in your sound file and the sample peak is the highest digital point that it reaches in your sample now for sound to be heard the digital signal has to be converted to an analog signal and that's why the true peak is a good metric to use for the peak level of a waveform so this is our waveform and we're going to use the true pick so that will be one of the picks in the sound file okay now our target level so what this is going to do you can set anything from zero all the way to minus 20. now if your voice sounds really loud already if you find the clip that is really loud i suggest moving this to about minus 10 that's if you're already speaking very loudly but if your voice is sounding a little bit more quieter or softer then you can move it all the way up to about minus one i usually keep mine on about minus three so let me go ahead and set the target level to minus three and then I click the normalize button. So once you click normalize, what DaVinci Resolve will do then is take your whole audio file here, go through it and normalize all these waves that you see in the audio file. So let's go ahead and click normalize. And as you can see, the wave files already look a little bit different. So if I play a little bit of this now, let's see if there's a difference. Hi, and this is the sample of the voice recording that we're going to be using to improve the quality on. All right, now there's not much difference here, but in cases where you had a sound file that was really loud or really soft, you would notice a huge difference. Now keep in mind that the sample file that we started off with was already pretty good quality. I recorded it using the Blue Yeti Nano microphone, which is quite good. Already straight out the box, it did sound pretty decent. Now that we've normalized the audio, go ahead and click on the Fairlight tab. So the Fairlight tab is located here. This takes you to the dashboard where you've got all your sound settings. And this is where we're going to be doing everything from now on to improve our audio file. First thing you want to do is make sure that you can see this mixer panel here. If you can't see the mixer panel, go ahead and on top here there's a little mixer button click that so if you click that it hides it if you click it again it opens it up another thing that i like to do is just place the clip that i'm working with into a loop so if i click this that means that when i press play it's going to play the audio clip over and over again i don't have to press stop and play all the time we're going to start off by applying some of the special effects and as you can see here we're working with our audio one so this is our audio one track if you had multiple tracks they would all show up here so you have to kind of select the one you're working with and then over here in the mixer you can see a1 so this all these settings here if i scroll down there's lots of stuff here all this corresponds to this audio track one okay now to add our first effect you're going to have to scroll up or down until you see this option here that says effects once you find effects there's a little plus button on here click the plus button 
and you'll see a whole bunch of drop down options appear. We're looking for something called the DSA, and the DSA is located in the noise reduction option. So, under noise reduction, find DSA and click on it. So, what the DSA does, it decreases those harsh S and SH sounds, it lowers the loudness so that they much more toned down and you don't hear them as much in your video. So, basically, this tool here has this little graph, and you can see here that it's set to decrease those sounds at about minus eight. So, usually I leave this at the default settings i don't really change anything here because i find it does a really good job on default you can see here it's switched on already so if i move this aside if you wanted to see what your voice clip sounds like before and after what you could do is leave this on press play and then while it's playing you can switch it off to toggle it on and off so we're going to leave it to on and we're going to close this and as you can see now our first effect is already applied next effect that we're going to add is a vocal channel so once again click on the plus button find the channel option and find something called vocal channel okay the first thing we want to do in the vocal channel is enable this high pass option over here so if i enable that now what this does it reduces the sound below a certain frequency and lets high frequencies pass so basically we're going to set a frequency that we want to reduce and let everything else pass so what i usually do for my videos i turn this down to about 100 and that means that everything in this blue color that you can see on your screen will get stopped and reduced and everything else will pass the next step can improve your audio quite a bit so let's go through that now so on the equalizer options change this mid setting to this little shape that's more pointed upwards now this mid option here applies to this dot that you see here okay once we've set that option what we're going to do now is take this midpoint down here and we're going to play our track on a loop so that it keeps repeating we're going to try adjust this point by going all the way up and scanning the top for where it sounds the worst so we're going to try find where my voice sounds the worst and then what we're going to do once we find that point we're going to remove that frequency by dragging that point down again so what that will do is remove the worst sounding part of my voice so that it sounds a bit better now this step i find improves your audio quite a bit so it's definitely worth doing that so let's go ahead and press play now i'm going to stop talking and we're going to listen to the audio and i'm going to try find where it sounds the worst hi and this is the sample of the voice recording that we're going to be using to improve the quality on so we're going to take this file and improve the sound quality of this audio so let's get started and do that right now hi and this is the sample of the voice recording that we're going to be using to improve the quality on so we're going to take this file and improve the sound quality of this audio and there we go we found the part where it didn't sound that great so i've moved it down maybe minus six is a bit too much so you could bring that up a little bit and yeah that's all we're gonna do under the equalizer part now i'm going to close this because it is switched on so we're done with that effect for now now the next effect you want to apply so go back to your effects press the plus button is located in dynamics and we're applying a multi-band compressor so as you can see here there's a multi-band compressor now what the multiband compressor does, it basically divides all the frequencies in your voice into spectrum so that each can have its own unique settings. So you've got different bands here, each one for different frequency settings. But this default works really well, so that's why I don't usually change anything here. I'm really happy to leave it on default. Just make sure it's switched on and then we close it down. Okay, now we're done with the special effects. So the next thing we're going to do is find something called dynamics. So you might have to just scroll a bit up and down until you find this option called dynamics. And there you'll see the dynamics square. Double click in that and it opens up your dynamics panel. Okay, now the first thing we want to do in our dynamics panel is turn on the gate. Now the gate is really good. It does make a big difference when you switch it on. So what this does is it lets all the signals above a certain threshold pass through unaffected. Everything else is reduced by the amount set in this range control here. So basically, if you set the range really high, you will have super quiet spots in your video. If you set the range a bit lower, your really quiet spots will just be toned down a little bit. If there's any kind of background noise or uh, say for example you're taking a deep breath when you're speaking you can basically set this threshold and range to kind of take away those sounds from your audio clip okay so what i usually like to do is set this threshold till about 40 so i lower it down to about 40 and then i increase the range to about 24 for my videos okay now remember while you're doing this it's always good to play your clip so you can hear how it sounds so let's go ahead and play a little bit so let's get started and do that right now Hi, and this is the sample of the voice recording that we're going to be using to improve the quality on. 
and that's how it sounds so far so let's move this back and the next thing we're going to do is turn on the compressor okay now what the compressor does it reduces the level of the audio signal if an amplitude exceeds a certain threshold so basically if your audio gets too loud or if there's a peak in it it will reduce the level of the audio a little bit if it passes at a certain threshold i normally decrease my threshold to about minus 17 you can even go minus 18, minus 17, and then I change the ratio to about four. So now what the ratio does, it determines how much gain reduction the compressor applies when the signal passes through that level of this threshold. So basically it it determines how much to reduce the sound by when it goes over the threshold that you've set here. Okay, and then at the bottom here, you've got another option called attack. I usually bring this up to about three. It basically controls how long the compression takes to compress the signal. So how long in milliseconds will this take to take effect when your voice is playing? Okay, and lastly on this panel, we're going to turn on the limiter. So basically how the compressor compresses the dynamic range, the limiter limits the range. So this is kind of like the ceiling through which the signal cannot pass. Then what you want to do here, notice that once I move this, you'll notice this blue line here on the graph moving upwards when I increase the threshold. And then you can see this is our audio, the green line. So what we want to do is just move this high enough until it meets here in the corners. To see what I mean, I'm going to move this up. As you can see, it's moving. And over here is where it kind of just stops above this green line. So that's where you want to leave it. So leave your threshold wherever that just goes above the green line. Make sure you never go over. So don't bring it higher. Just leave it over there okay and lastly on this page you've got this makeup adjustment over here where you can move everything up and down so if you notice the graph all those things are moving so this will basically add some volume to your sound clip while still applying all these settings at the bottom here the best way to use this is to actually play your audio and then increase this probably to around plus five i usually leave it at about plus five but also to listen to your audio while you're doing this so you can hear how it sounds and you can see these meters here how the audio actually looks so let's go ahead and play the voice clip and I'm gonna press play. So we're going to take this file and improve the sound quality of this audio. So let's get started and do that right now. Hi, and this is the sample of the voice recording that Cool, and I'm pretty happy with that, so I've made it 5.9. And that's all we have to do in this dynamic settings here. Once you're happy with that, go ahead and close dynamics. Okay, the second last thing we want to do is adjust our equalizer. So scroll up and down until you see something called EQ. That is your equalizer. So double click on that. So the equalizer basically lets you fine tune your audio to suit your needs. It lets you adjust frequency, gain and bandwidth of the filter. The first thing we want to do is turn on band 6 and adjust that frequency to about 14k. If you notice here next to the band, there's like a little shape here. So band 2, just change it to the same shape as band 3 and band 4. This just basically determines what shape it makes when you move these up and down. So in order for us to determine where your voice sounds the best, we're going to have to play the voice clip again. And while it's playing, I'm going to once again scan with these points, move them up and then decrease where they sounded bad or increase where they sounded good. So let's go ahead and play the voice clip and do the adjustments now that we're going to be using to improve the quality on. So we're going to take this file and improve the sound quality of this audio. So let's get started and do that right now. Hi, and this is the sample of the voice recording that we're going to be using to improve the quality on. So we're going to take this file and improve the sound quality of this audio. So let's get started and do that right now. Hi, and this is the sample of the voice recording that we're going to be using to improve the quality on. So we're going to take this file and improve the sound quality of this audio. So let's get started and do that right now. Okay, so as you heard, I had to take these points, drag them up, see where they sound the worst and drag them down a little bit. I usually only do point two, three, and four, but you're welcome to play with any of them, but I usually find that this is enough. Also, you can increase some gain here or decrease it. So let me play the audio clip now with the equalizer on and, with, and I'm gonna switch it off while the sound's playing just so we can see if we can hear any difference. Hi, and this is the sample of the voice recording that we're going to be using to improve the quality on. So we're going to take this file and improve the sound quality of this audio. So let's get started and do that 
right now. So you might have not heard much of a difference. Trust me, all these little things that we're doing now add up when it's time to export your video and you've adjusted all these things, they come together and they do make a big difference. So now that we're done with the equalizer, we can go ahead and switch it off. Okay, now the last thing we're going to look at is called panning. So go ahead and come back to your mixer and scroll down until you find something that says pan. Double click on that. And now by default, it is turned on. Now panning is one of those things I don't always use. I usually play my clip and then I switch it on and off and decide if it sounds better with the pan on or with the pan off. So what this does is basically just distributes your sound signal to sound kind of evenly. So as you can see here, the spread is set to full, which means it's gonna spread your audio along all the audio channels to sound quite good. So let's go ahead and play our sound file, switch this on and off and see which one we prefer. Hi, and this is the sample of the voice recording that we're going to be using to improve the quality on. So we're going to take this file and improve the sound quality of this audio. So let's get started and do that right now. Hi, and this is the sample of the voice recording that we're going to be using to improve the quality on. So we yeah, I'm going to leave the pan on in this case and you can go ahead and just shut it down on the default. And there you go. We've done all our settings now. So just by applying these five things, your speaking audio will sound a lot better, a lot clearer. And will you have to apply these settings every single time you've got a voice clip? No, you don't have to. There is a way to save these settings now into your presets. So let me go ahead and show you how to do that. So what you want to do is go up here and click on the Fairlight option and then find your presets library option. So click on presets library. And as you can see here, you've got this thing that says filter by. Now I've already got a couple presets done, but I'm going to show you how to do them anyways. If I click this filter by, you'll see three options here. Equalizer presets, which we have adjusted. Dynamic presets, which we have adjusted. And plugging presets, which are those effects that we've added on. So we have to save our preset for each one of these. So let's start with the equalizer presets. Now we're going to click on audio because that's where we apply them to audio one. And I'm going to click on save new it's going to ask you would you like to update the current one or create a new one i'm going to say create a new one and i'm just going to call it tutorial and then i'm going to say okay so now we know that next time we come here into the presets library if we want to apply the same settings from the equalizer we're just going to say tutorial and then apply onto the channel that we want to apply them to and you have to do the same thing with the dynamic presets because we've done those as well Okay, and once again, you have to do the same for the plugging preset. So if we click plugging preset, set audio one, and we're going to say save new, create new tutorial. Okay, and there you go. Next time they're all there. So now if I go back, you can see your tutorial preset is there under dynamics, equalizer, and plugging presets. Thanks for watching this tutorial. That's all it is to it. That's how you can improve the quality of your audio tracks. I hope this helps you out. And thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope it helps you out. I hope you learned something. If you did, do give me a thumbs up and do consider subscribing to this channel. In the future, I aim to come up with many more tutorials and videos that will hopefully help you out. So thanks for watching. Stay safe and take care.